Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on Business Process Modeling, Best Practices for the Enterprise. This is Christina Cardoza, News Editor of SD Times. Before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping announcements. First, if at any time you have questions about or during the presentation, you may submit them using the Control Panel's Questions tab. Secondly, this webinar will be recorded and available on demand through the sdtimes.com website in about 24 hours after the event. Here at SC Times, we know the importance of documenting and laying out your business processes in order to improve efficiency, accuracy, and gain better business results. Today's webinar will discuss how moving to a dedicated processing mapping software can help business users improve process, implement version control, keep teams in sync, and standardize an effective process mapping solution across the organization. Here to talk about this more is IBM Cloud Technical Specialist, Bob Flory. Bob is a thought leader in the BPMN space, and he discusses best practices to solve version control and collaboration issues that often impact process mapping. Now to get things started, I will turn it over to you, Bob. Hey, thank you very much. I sure appreciate the introduction. Nice job. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I appreciate everyone that's taking time out of their day to, uh, to join me today. Um, as, uh, as mentioned, uh, I am Bob Sporey, and I'm going to be your uh, cruise director today. Uh, I have been in this space for about 18 years, uh, but I don't want you to think that makes me old. I, I, I just started as a very, very young child. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I, I started as a process improvement consultant, and I use process modeling tools to improve processes with customers. Uh, since at IBM, I've had several process automation technical, technical sales and sales roles. Uh, and just a little bit about me, I live in Southern Illinois. Uh, we're big pug lovers here. Uh, we've got three pugs, two of, them are, two of them are rescues, and we have a newly adopted 12-year-old chocolate lab uh, named Charlie Brown. So that's a little, bit of, a little bit about me. So what is this ninja, ninja business all about? Well, <laughs> About three years ago, I submitted a speaker proposal to present uh, a session similar to this at one of our co customer conferences. And I knew for it to be accepted, it had to be a good name. So I came up with this being a process ninja, uh, you know, uh, business process modeling best practice. Well, since then, the ninja thing has really taken off and has a life of its own. So uh, if you choose to follow the path of ninjaness, uh, I'd like to point you to this website, processninja.us. Um, there's some interesting information there, uh, and there's also uh, also some information about a Ninja webinars monthly uh, uh, series that that I do each month as well uh, on on different topics. So if you're interested, uh, you can go there and check that out. And yes, we will provide the, I think a link to this presentation and a recording uh, moving forward. So let's get to it. So most of you probably know this already, but modeling is more uh, than an art, more of an art uh, than a science. Uh, however, having principles or methodologies around your modeling practice really helps ensure consistency and it helps ensure success. Uh, so over the next 25 minutes or so, what I want to do is cover some of the guidelines that I share with my customers. Uh, and just for the sake of transparency, IBM does have an excellent uh, business process modeling tool called BlueWorks Live. But today, our discussion is really not about tooling. It's about the best practices, and they're, they're really tool agnostic. So whether you use BlueWorks Live or another modeling tool, uh, I hope you pick up something useful. And if you just remember one thing for this, this entire uh, presentation, please remember to uh, keep it simple. And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, typically when organizations start modeling or they begin a new modeling project or they even have a modeling center of competency, there is a, a common mistake that a lot of folks make where they try to introduce uh, too much complexity into uh, their organization. It, it kind of reminds me of like my yearly, uh, my, my yearly uh, get in shape uh, New Year's New Year's um, resolution in, on January 1st or, or 2nd, right? Where, you know, I'm going to lose weight this year, so I decide I'm going to go to the YMCA every morning at 5 o'clock, and I'm going to work out, and I'm going to eat turkey and do all these sorts of things, and I, I try to do too much at one time. So by, like, the fourth day, you know, I can't get up at 5 o'clock anymore. I can't go work out, and I'm tired of turkey. Well, 
use that analogy. Uh, so when you are working in your organization, you're putting guidelines and methodologies together, keep things simple at first, right? Understand uh, what, you know, what you're trying to accomplish and other people need to understand what is, uh, what your project approach and, uh, is as well. So make sure you don't introduce too much complexity. Keep it simple. Uh, other thing that I'll mention here is that process models are really what differentiates your organization from the competition. Everything your organization does is a business process. And it's the individuals that work within the process and that process itself that uh, makes your company who it is. So if you're not already doing this, you need to really have a process-centric approach. Uh, one of the reasons that Amazon is doing as well as they do is they're extremely process centric. They are driven by process and trying to improve their processes. So, uh, you know, if we can take anything from Amazon, um, let's, uh, let's uh, take that they have this uh, real passion for improving processes. When you start to work and model, you really need to prioritize your processes. And what I mean by this is focus on discovering the process first to understand the health and the welfare of the process. Don't focus on the technology first. A lot of times, particularly if modeling comes from the IT side of the house, what happens is IT comes and says, hey, we have this software product, and they basically try to solve your problem with the product. You need to take a different look at the process itself. Uh, many things can be improved in a, a business process that do not require technology. Uh, so you can model the process, you can look at it, you can eliminate steps that don't make sense, all those things uh, that business analysts do. Uh, and then to be successful, a project really has to have a man management champion. Uh, the champion is the one that provides air cover for you and helps overcome resistance because uh, the people become very concerned when you start modeling processes that somehow their their jobs are going to be in jeopardy or uh, they're going to get in trouble for for the job that they do so with that said make sure you get a champion that clears the path for you and helps you get people on your team and be successful and speaking of team as you move forward you need to involve a team so you need to build a process team that includes that management champion and other people in your organization that can provide value. It can be business analysts, process owners, you know, knowledge workers, as I call them, SMEs, technical team members. You can build a very nice team with different roles uh, as a part of it. But the key thing to this is to make sure that everyone understands their role. Because if someone doesn't understand what they're expected to do, uh, they're not going to embrace the project and you're not going to be you're not going to have the success you uh, desire it's important to define the scope of this process or the project that you are working on i'm sure many of you have heard the term uh, scope creep but this just basically means that you start working on a project and then people just keep adding more and more to it you need to create or create a process and understand the the beginning of the process, the middle, and the end. And so I like to say you need to identify the who, what, when, where, and why of the, uh, of the process. And then the process is how all these things actually happen. And it's important to understand why, why you're modeling in the first place. Uh, there are different purposes for modeling. Sometimes you just want to document your process steps uh, so that new employees can come in and, and see how the process uh, performs right, what their responsibility is within that process. Uh, other times you want to do analysis and improve your process. So you want to add additional, uh, additional information like time and cost metrics and uh, inputs and outputs and other types of, of metrics. And then finally, people will model for automation. And this means they want to take this process and automate it, uh, make it come to life using a workflow solution. Depending on what your goal is or why you're modeling determines what level of detail or the details that you uh, populate in your business process model. Everyone wants to be successful in a, in a modeling project, but what I recommend is rather than taking what I call a big bang approach, what you would like, what you really should do is take an in incremental approach, right? Keep it simple, like I mentioned before. Uh, you can produce results that will help uh, create skills 
and people will get interested when you start with a small, um, easily managed project. If you try to do something that's too big, uh, oftentimes you won't get the momentum you need and, it'll, and you'll, you'll stall out. As I was saying, keep the project simple, you need to keep your model simple as well. Remember, the reason we model in the first place is visually it's easier to understand things if it's visual. And you need, uh, and the reason we model is so that other people can understand how things work so we can make decisions and improve them. People should understand what happens in the process quickly. So when I get a process model, I should be able to look at it in just a couple minutes, really understand what's going on in that process. If I can't, that means your model's too complex or maybe you have too much detail uh, right for the, for the reader to, uh, to, to see. Uh, you can do things like take the activities and put them into sub-processes or build a high-level flow so people can get that perspective that they need. Um, ensuring that people understand where and how to access this library you've created uh, is, is really critical. Uh, and it needs to be in a single location. So this can, uh, and when they go to that location, can they find the processes that they need? This can be accomplished by creating spaces uh, or folders um, using a, a couple different approaches, one of which is uh, by organizational structure and how is your company organized, human resources, sales, marketing, et cetera. Another is something called the APQC definition. And if you go to apqc.org, you can check it out. But basically what they do is provide the, the typical capabilities that a company has, and it's a numerical uh, thing. So it would be like operations, product development, things of that nature. Or if you have a customer journey map, that's a great way to organize your, your folders and your processes. Because once you create the, the processes, you want people to access them, use them, and reuse them. As you're working through these projects, uh, it's important that you create what we call milestones or, or phases in this project. So you don't wait to the very end to, uh, to see what the results of the project are. You set uh, incremental milestones throughout this entire project, and then you validate those milestones and get sign off as you go. Um, I found this to be very effective. So because what can happen at the uh, end of this project is it doesn't turn out the way you expected if you didn't get the approvals and follow those milestones along the way. The key to getting business people excited about things and getting them involved is collaboration. It's it's uh, it's necessary. Uh, to ensure that your, your methodology that you use and the tools that you use are designed for business users. It's easy to use, easy for them to get started. And again, you keep it simple uh, so that the methodologies don't overwhelm them. It's something that they can do. But once you get people collaborating, working on things, uh, commenting, that's, uh, that's, how you get, that's how you get success. I must have really, um, really, thought that being uh, organize, uh, organized is important because I have it on two slides, but, uh, 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 and I apologize for that. But um, what we need to do is, uh, as I said, uh, organize your thing. And what I like when you go and you look at a process model itself, you need to focus on how people really perform the existing process. Uh, oftentimes people will get in a room and they'll start modeling the way the process should, uh, should work, but it's not really the way that it does work. You really need to know how it actually performs. Usually folks have what we call undocumented workaround, and there's organizational knowledge in, that, in, in those people that do that work. So you wanna make sure you capture that current process, the way they do it, and capture all that good information that, that's available. Um, and be sure to work with the people that actually know the process and are responsible for it. So, you know, managers are great and everything, but they don't actually do the work. So when you're doing interviews and facilitating sessions, get the people in the room that do the work. Governance is really the key to the, uh, to the success of your project. Um, and I'm using governance and methodology. So methodology or, or principles are the, are the things that you're supposed to follow. Governance really includes making sure that uh, people you know, are following those standards, but you need to establish standards and best practices. Um, and there are some different frameworks out there that you can use. There's a BPMN framework, and there's also 
uh, other uh, other frameworks that you can use like Lean Sigma and Six Sigma and those sorts of things uh, as well. But the, one of the more common issues uh, and reasons for failure is the lack of governance and uh, methodologies in place. A good way to ensure that you do have this, you know, you do have governance is uh, establishing a center of excellence. Uh, a center of excellence. Uh, what this does is it prior prioritizes the project and it helps you maintain your process library and then establish best practices. And as I mentioned, hey, you've got the standards, but you've got to verify that people are following them. So regardless of what methodology you use, it's important that you have the discipline to make sure they're being followed and then train and alter behavior uh, as needed. When you're modeling a process, uh, it's important to understand all the possible pathways um, or, or, or gateways of that process. Uh, one way to, to start, and this is my preference, is we want to capture the, uh, the happy path first, if, if you know what I mean, uh, from left to right. What this means is that if everything goes perfectly uh, in your process uh, and with no exceptions, this is, this is how it goes. Once you have that documented, uh, it's okay to go back and at that point add in the other exceptions because the exception paths often occur more frequently than realized. And the exception paths require a significant effort to resolve typically. So the goal of modeling in general is you want to uh, ensure that most of your uh, the flow of your process and most of the things going through it go through the optimal path. Uh, and there's no real way to really understand the optimal path until you model it and then you look at the exceptions. Uh, something else that uh, I would ask you to focus on is version control. Uh, this is uh, really important because oftentimes if people can't find the process or they don't know what version they're on, uh, it really causes a, a significant headache. It's a bigger issue than, than most realize. So you wanna make sure people can access the current version. You wanna make sure that they, you save the evolution of your process and how it's changed because oftentimes you'll need to, to go back. Um, and you know, consider using tooling that helps uh, simplify a, a version of management. If you, uh, if you don't have a best practices or uh, center of excellence in place, uh, a good way to get jump started is certainly you can have this document that I've created and it's actually a 45 uh, slide document and uh, you're lucky because I'm not taking you through all the, all those slides. I only have a couple more, but uh, you can download this and you, you'll be provided this. So you can use this document as a starting point if you'd like for your own, uh, your own methodologies within the organization. All right. So, I did mention BlueWorks Live at the beginning. Uh, so BlueWorks Live is our process modeling tool, and it can help you satisfy all these requirements and these best practices that I just mentioned. It is a cloud-based tool that's super easy to use. It's very collaborative. You, you know, multiple ind individuals can work on the same process at the same time. Uh, you can, uh, one person can be drawing the process, another person can be adding data and information behind it. It's a central repository where everything is. It does automatic version control. And there's different types of licenses you can use where some people can just view the process and others can comment. Uh, there are uh, custom help screens that you can, be cre that you can create. There is built-in training. Uh, it's a really, uh, really rich set of, of tools. Okay, I did want to show one other slide. Let me unhide these. I have a little more time than I thought, so bear with me. Okay. All right, and so I'm going to run through this slide and one more, and then uh, we can certainly open it up for any uh, questions that you might have. But uh, how do you pick the process that you want to start with? Right? They didn't really touch on that. We talked about all the things you're supposed to do. The, these are the types of things that I prefer to look at. And, and in today's environment, which processes result in customer dissatisfaction, that's the number one thing. And so what I suggest is you model your process, 
you highlight or colorize the objects in your model where you could provide outstanding uh, an, out, an outstanding customer experience. When you do that, you identify these, these critical touch points, and then you can go to work focusing on those touch points and ensuring that you're providing the best service to your customers as you can. There's other uh, keys that you can look at, which processes have obvious problems, you know, they just don't work, they're manual. Some have high cost, high volume, maybe there's bottlenecks, maybe there's errors. Maybe you're getting regulatory fines. Uh, usually, these are, this is the criteria that I use to determine which process to work on. And then, uh, th what is the focus? What do you look for? Uh, um, you know, what are some of the improvement focuses that you can take out of a process? So again, if it's a customer service issue or there's activities that don't add value, you can take those out. Or maybe it's manual data entry or paper and spreadsheets. So as you're modeling your process, you can look at these sorts of things. And the, in my biggest one is this rekeying of information between systems. This is very common where individuals will get something in an email or, or in one particular application and then they have to copy or rekey it into a different application. These are the sorts of things that I would recommend you eliminate out of your, out of your processes. Okay, so this is uh, my final slide. Uh, I, did, I did mention this at the beginning, but uh, I, I participate in a webinar series. Once a month, we do webinars. One is a deep dive on IBM BlueWorks Live, which I just mentioned. But we also do other webinars for robotic process automation and our uh, uh, IBM business process uh, uh, management or workflow uh, product as well. So with that said, uh, let's maybe open this up for some questions. What do you think, guys? Great. Yeah, that sounds great, Bob. Um, just curious, do you have a demo available, or is there any demos available online um, that attendees can get of IBM BlueWorks? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So um, let me just go to this next slide. So this link at the top here, um, and I'll click on it to show you what this does, is we have this site uh, that is an overview of IBM BlueWorks Live. It uh, has multiple little demos here. So there's a two-minute demo, a four-minute demo, and another demo. And you can do a hands-on product tour. So you can test drive IBM BlueWorks Live. And finally, there is a hands-on lab uh, for IBM BlueWorks Live as well. If you just go to blueworkslive.com, you can you'll notice there's additional information here, and you can see our product manager Brian here. Uh, but there is a demo, and then there's a free trial. So you can start your free trial by clicking this button. You're asked for information, as you might expect, and then you're you will basically immediately get an instance of Blueworks Live, and you can begin inviting other users to that instance so that they can participate and uh, in, enjoy uh, the collaboration capability that I, that I referred to. Great. Now, can you just go through, um, you know, the Blue Works Live solution a little bit more? What are its um, main features to really help with the mapping process? Okay, that's another great question. I will, um, yeah, let me do that again. Okay, so I did touch on it, uh, but what, uh, let me just uh, play this again. Um, I did touch on it uh, a, a little bit, but uh, the, way to, to, the way to think about this is it's a tool designed for business users to, to work on that maybe don't have a lot of technical skill. Uh, when we designed this product, and it, it's actually was IBM's first cloud product, it's been out about nine years now. When we designed it and tested it with users, we found that users could use BlueWorks Live and have success with it, the same skill level of, of someone who could handle like email and, and Outlook. Um, there were folks that were that could use this that were unable to um, open or open or zip a zip file. So 
it was tested to be very simple and easy to use. Uh, one of my favorite features about it is that there's actually three different views of your business model. The, the first view is a discovery view. Uh, and that basically represents like putting sticky notes on a, on a board where you put the, the phases along the top and the activities below. So you can quickly get modeling right away. Works really well in a, a session where it's facilitated, uh, like a modeling session. Then you can convert that to a tr traditional process model. And the tr traditional process model, uh, you know, has all the lines and everything that you might expect, but we have an auto layout feature. And what we learned was 40% of the time people spend modeling, they are straightening lines and moving boxes around, 40%. So we take that out of the equation for you. All the activities are automatically connected. And then to add a new activity to the flow, you just click on the connection line and select the, uh, the activity that you want to insert. Uh, it's a really, really powerful tool. And then finally, what I would say is the third view is a documentation view. And so all the information that you're capturing, and you can put in you know, time, cost, resource information, you can put in problems, you can uh, attach documents, you can write, uh, you can take notes, you can add comments. All these sorts of things are then per, uh, populated in this documentation view, and it's literally a Word document that you can download. And so basically, as you create your model and put information, your documentation that supports the process is, is created for you. Any other questions? Yeah, so are users able to take their um, processes and then automate them in IBM uh, BPM? Uh, that's a good question, yes, yes. So IBM, you know, we don't keep the, li the lights on with uh, BlueWorks Live. It's, a, it's our least expensive product. Uh, in general terms, it's about $50 a month for an editor, and editors can do everything. Uh, there's a, con a contributor license, which is about half of that, and they can go in and look at the processes and comment, but they can't do anything. And then we have a viewer license, and a viewer license allows people to go and view view the uh, view the process itself. The reason we ha we have this product is we feel so strongly about process modeling uh, that we we offer this to, to customers. And even if you don't use BlueWorks Live, which you know, like I said, it's a great tool, but even if you use something different, that's fine. Uh, but we want you to model your processes so that when you do automate things, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a well thought out design process. There's an old thing where they say, uh, if you take a, a bad process and you automate it, then you have a bad process that goes really, really fast. So modeling helps eliminate that. Uh, our business automation workflow solution is a, a sister product uh, I guess, or brother product, I guess, to IBM BlueWorks Live. So what that means is once you model your business process, uh, it can be literally opened in uh, the, the business automation workflow product. Now, this is where you bring your process to life and you build user screens using a drag and drop palette. And this is where you create it, but it all starts in, in BlueWorks Live. Now, you don't have to start in BlueWorks Live. You can just start in, in business automation workflow. But because it's based on BPMN, which is Business Process Modeling Notation, uh, what's interesting is that so our workflow engine runs on that as well. So you can create that process and then refine it, improve it, and then open it and automate it in the, in the IBM Business Automation Workflow product. Great. Now, you mentioned um, a little bit in the beginning about a center of excellence. Can you talk a little bit more about how to successfully set one of these up? Absolutely, sure thing. So the center of excellence is really like the, the lifeguard at the swimming pool, right? You know, you don't really need a lifeguard, but without a lifeguard, things get crazy and people start, you know, doing flips off the side of the pool and bringing in illegal floaties and all that kind of stuff, right? That's really what the center of excellence is. Um, that you can you can look up a lot of things online around centers of excellence, and you know they can be very very complex and very uh, intimidating. Now again, as I said, I'm really into doing things simple, simple and in a, in a simple fashion. So the best way to do that is you know have your champion uh, help facilitate this, and it's best to get people from different parts of the organization, uh, as I mentioned. So you you need someone 
that literally their job is to control like the glossary, for example, because if you add things into BlueWorks Live, uh, these, these, uh, these values um, become part of the glossary. And sometimes they're not values that you want people to use or they're using the wrong names or, or something. So you need someone to manage that glossary and clean it up. Uh, and then you also need someone to look and manage where the processes are being saved and how they're being, uh, you know, how they're being reused. Are they naming them the right way? Are they in the right place? Uh, so you, you have those particular roles. It can be one person doing this. Uh, and then on, on the, on at, at a higher level, you know, you may want to have some managers in there that help determine what's the next process that we go to. Uh, typically, like the, the squeaky wheel gets the, gets the oil, but just because someone complains about their process, you know, I prefer to take a more holistic view and then ha have a group of people decide uh, what process to focus on. And by doing that, you get people's buy-in and they're more receptive to, par uh, to participate. Great. So, you know, what um, would you say is the difference between Blue Works Live and a business automation workflow? Well, Blue Works Live is a um, is a process mapping slash modeling tool, right? It's a uh, it's the equivalent of drawing little boxes on your whiteboard, but just in a more sophisticated way. Uh, the when it becomes automated, that's when you are, are actually orchestrating your process. It's taking what you've drawn and you and you bring it to life, just like a conductor of an orchestra. A conductor of an orchestra stands up there with their baton, their little stick, and they'll say, okay, it's time for percussion to play, and here's the pace that we're going at, and now it's time for the horns and the strings and the and, and that, I'm not a, I'm not a, a concert goer, believe me, but it, it's just a pretty good analogy. <laughs> but that's what they do, and that's what automation software does. So what it does is it ties together uh, people and systems and, and information. So a process could be kicked off by an order coming in through email. It automatically kicks off a process. And then as a, as a worker, I, I come to work and I open my BPM portal and I see I've got a list of tasks that I have to work on. I click on it, I open it up, I review this order, and I approve or decline it, and if I approve it, it can go off and, and kick off our inventory system, or it could be sent to another human being for approval. Um, these are the sorts of things that happen in automation. So again, it's really taking that picture and bringing it to life. Great, now can you just um, you know, show the attendees one more time where they will be able to get the you know, demo of IBM Blueworks and what it will go through for them? Absolutely. So I'll show you a couple of things here. We're going uh, off road now. Okay. Bear with me. The easiest, so the easiest place to go is processninja.us. Okay. This is my dumb little website. Um, if you click on this button right here, this takes you to the site that I just showed you, the digital technical engagement site. The reason I'm showing you this is the URL is easier to remember. And the reason it's US and not com or net is because those were way more expensive. So processmission.us was cheap, so <laughs> that's why I picked it. Um, so this digital technical enablement area is the, ble is the best place to go. It has things, uh, it has these videos and test, and test drives for uh, almost all of IBM's products, including BlueWorks Live and our BPM solution. Another, and, and from there you can click and do the trial. Another great, place to, to learn more is uh, our Process Ninja web series. So you, these are the links you can use to register. And as you can see, these are anywhere from two hours, uh, an hour and a half to two hours. So we can get, we get into a lot more uh, detail. If you're interested in modeling best practices, I would suggest uh, you check out this PDF or you can download it from the site where the, uh, where the video is uh, going to be posted. Great. Before we wrap things up, I just want to throw it back over to you one last time, Bob. Um, you know, for any mm -hmm. last thoughts or any key takeaways you'd like to leave our attendees with today. I appreciate that. Yeah. So the the key the two two key things here. First of all, it's process modeling is is really critically important for the organization. So building that 
that uh, mindset and building those skills is, 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 uh, is really paramount to be successful. Now, whether you use BlueWorks Live or don't use BlueWorks Live, you know, that's your choice. Uh, we feel like it's a great product that really helps you be successful. But if you don't use BlueWorks Live, you know, use a piece of paper, use a whiteboard. Now, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, but, uh, you know, a, a tool, a modeling tool, in, in particular, Blue, Blue, Blue Works Live could, could really help your, uh, your, your practice. That's number one. Number two is, again, I said it two or three times. Uh, they say you have to repeat things three times for people to remember them. Keep it simple. Keep your models visually simple. Keep your methodology simple. Uh, don't try to do too much too soon. Uh, start, you know, crawl, uh, you know, crawl, walk, run. Uh, use that approach, and, and I'm sure you'll have a great success. And I and I want to thank everybody for joining. I appreciate it. This was a this was a great uh, a great turnout and a and a great opportunity for me. So thank you so much, and, and good luck with your modeling. Great, thanks, Bob. Thanks for a great presentation. Again, that was um, Bob Corey the IBM Cloud Technical Specialist at IBM. Uh, I would also like to thank IBM for sponsoring today's webinar, as well as the attendees for joining us today. Until next time, I'm Christina Cardoza with SD Times.